happy to have Maud back on the road. She's a bit boring with an open diff. So loud. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, sir. Hello, all. <laughs> this stuff's getting really expensive now. Really well. expensive. It gets thicker and thicker. The more you stir. Like gravy. Yeah, a bit like gravy. <laughs> really? That's what we want. I like my gravy thicker than that. Yeah, I'll bet you do. <laughs> it's only an old banger for the escort. And with the engine bay done, it was my turn to have a go. No, no. One coat. I'll put it on the spot. With every pull of the trigger, I was getting more and more confident with the spray gun. Yeah, we're, we're not going to be trusting any of the primer that's on the outside of the body shell either. Definitely not. Hello and welcome to this video. I'm Marcus Hayes and today you join me from the cockpit of Maud, my Maud All Mark II Escort. The car that I've only recently started driving again since I took Esther, my Mark I Escort, back over to her garage and uh, yeah, put this thing back on the road. There's definitely loads of noise coming from the rear end of this thing. If you've been watching my videos, you'll know that I recently nicked the diff and the half shafts from my other model Mark II Escort that I like to call Heidi. And uh, yeah, that car has been off the road for years. Um, I obviously bought it as a rolling project. So these half shafts and this diff, um, yeah, I don't know the history of, you know, I've, I've never used before now. Now the bearings on these half shafts were very rusty looking. So I don't know if the noise is coming from them, but the noise isn't a hum. Normally with wheel bearings, you get like a humming sound. This is more like a <laughs> sort of thing. Um, so yeah, maybe it's the diff bearings, I don't know. But happy to have Maud back on the road. She's a bit boring with an open diff, but that might stop the half shaft snapping uh, until I figure out exactly what's going on with her rear axle. I think the axle's bent or something. Anyway, today is not about Maud, it is about Heidi. And I'm on my way now to my good friend Rob's workshop. Rob is obviously carrying out some paintwork to Heidi's engine bay and the door shuts. But today, I'm gonna be doing a bit of learning. Yeah, Rob has basically said that he wants to show me how to do some proper paintwork with the compressor and his spray gun. So um, yeah, really excited to uh, have what is actually my second go on a proper spray gun. I did have a very brief go years ago, just at an old panel. Um, didn't really learn much. Someone just gave me a gun and said, yeah, have a go with that. So this is my first proper go with a spray gun and a compressor. You would have seen that I've got, you know, quite good skills, I'd like to say, with spray cans. I've done quite a lot of spray can painting over the years, but um, yeah, excited to do my first proper bit of painting today. So loud. <laughs> I quietened the exhaust so that I could hear the engine more, and now all I can hear is the rear end. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, sir. Hello, all. <laughs> now, since the last time I was down here, Rob has been removing the final bits of paint on the door shuts because we literally can't trust any of the paint. Nothing or whatsoever. Crap before you. Take it off. So yeah, they're all bare metal now. And as you would have just seen in the clips, Rob's been doing the last bits of filler work. There's a bit there. There's a bit over here. I noticed there were some quite lumpy welds on this slam panel as well. So we quickly ground those down and we've put filler in those. The battery tray isn't in the best shape to be honest, but uh, yeah, we put a bit of filler in the corner there where there was a hole. And yeah, basically, it's uh, pretty much ready for the next stage now that Rob has degreased all the areas. And the next stage of this job then, Rob, is to put some etch primer on the bare metal areas, basically. Yeah, that's right, yeah. But the primer needs to to adhere too, and it also takes it from rust. So we're gonna put on the U-pole. Etch primer. Yeah, we're gonna use that one. Then we're gonna go for the high build MEPA. 
primer. And that's two pack high bill primer, yeah, right? Yeah, four to one mix, yeah. Once we've put the primer on, we can rub that down with 320, 500, get it nice and smooth. And then that's ready for the top coat. And obviously this engine bay, I already bare metaled and used epoxy primer and you were saying that doesn't need it. The epoxy primer is very good as well because it's non-porous. No yeah. water can get through that. Yeah. So yeah, it's very good stuff. Yeah, literally the reason I used epoxy was because I didn't know how long it was going to be left like this and I heard that it was non-porous basically. Yeah it's, yeah, it's unbelievable that stuff that you can use now. Yeah. But yeah, it, this is just as good doing it this way. But um, yeah, you'll still get the same result at the end of it. Yeah. And obviously, because you're literally going to be putting the two pack straight on top of this, yes. it doesn't matter that no. that is um, porous, no. basically. No. Yeah. yeah, this is actually what we used on Esther, my Mark 1 Escort, when the guy had done the paintwork. So, yeah, I've used a, a lot of this stuff. This stuff's getting really expensive now. Really as well. expensive. <laughs> <laughs> really expensive. I remember you used to be able to get this in Halfords for about a tenner a can. What is it now? About 20 quid or something? Yeah, near enough that, I think. <laughs> Plus the dreaded, isn't it? So. <laughs> Plus the vat. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so as, as Rob was saying, the next stage is to hit the door shuts with the etch primer and we're going to put a bit on these areas where we're doing the filler, right? Yeah, where there's any bare metal, we'll put etch on there just yeah. to give it that bit more protection before we put any primer on. Yeah. All right, so that's the etch primer in done. It's uh, quite a transparent coat, you know, it isn't solidly covered. Um, I probably would have wasted way more paint than that. But, yeah, uh, with etch, you don't need to fully coat any, as long as you've got a nice coverage there, yeah. you know, that's more than enough for it to yeah. do its purpose. You can still see through it. You don't need to cover it all. So that's good enough for yeah. any etch to be put on any car. So, um, while that's sort of flashing off, won't take long, yep. you're going to start mixing up the Yeah, so we're going to mix up some Mipa primer. So this is a four to one. So this is the actual primer itself. Then we've got a hardener. And so then it's four, four parts primer four, four to one part, part hardener. hardener. Right? Yeah. And then a lot of people just add a dash of thinners just to help it smooth out and flow better through the gun. Cool. <laughs> It starts off quite runny, it gets thicker and thicker, the more you stir. Like gravy? Yeah, a bit <laughs> like gravy. <laughs> That's what we want. I like my gravy thicker than that. Yeah, I'll bet you do. <laughs> so we're going to put this in the gun now, and then I'm going to show yourself how to put on your first coat of ever with a big boy gun. So you're going to do one side, I'm going to do the other, is that the plan? That's right, yeah. Right, cool. Tell us about your gun. Okay, this is a Devervis gun. Pro, it's a PRI for primer. Yeah. Uh, it's a 1.8 setup. Is that the needle whole... size? All oh, right. That's the actual size. So and does a... that just control how thick it comes out, or is that to yeah, the so, fan? Or so like your guns, spray guns uh, for clear coat, I use a 1.2 setup. Uh, for base coat, I use a 1.3, uh, but for primer, I use a 1.8. Right. I like to have a nice build up there. Yeah. So I've got plenty to rub down, get a nice smooth finish. And in terms of, obviously we'll go into more detail when we put the paint in, in on in another video, but in terms of two pack paint, yeah. would you use a different like uh, number? Than yeah, so basic, if, I, if I was using clear, like, two pack, I would put it in my base coat gun. Okay. So a 1.3, right. that'd give you a really nice finish. Cool. But this gun is only specific for primer. Right. Yeah, you need a high build. And this is the best gun for it. Cool. So I see you've got a gauge here. That, that's to do with the air pressure. Right? Yeah, you. so when we're spraying, it's got to be at least two bar it, throughout the whole time that we're using this. Um, if it starts dripping down, then the actual paint flow coming out will come down as well and it starts spitting. Right. Um, so you always got to make sure you've got good pressure all the time at, at your trigger. So yeah, you need a good size compressor at least a 150 tank size, and you should be able to get quite a good finish with that. All right, cool. Uh, talk about these knobs here, because you were telling me about them earlier on. Okay, so the top one is your fan. So if you push that all the way in, 
like that. So when you spray, it'll come out as a spot. Yeah. Spot, like, like a round circle. But if you pull it out, as you unwind it, your fan will get bigger. Right. This, you can control how much paint you want to come out of the gun. If you didn't want a lot of paint to come out and you just wanted to do little tiny areas, you know, like spot priming, yeah. then you can wind this in. You can actually turn your pressure down on that one, on the gun, and you can actually only do a little area. So you're not getting a full trigger, you're only getting half a trigger. Got you. So that's what you can do with this. Yeah. So basically, you can control your air from here. I always have this one fully out, but because we're running a gauge, you run it through that one. That's right. your air control. Right. So when we put that the airline on, I will show you that this can be adjusted from here. Yeah, yeah. Instead of that one. That's the setup that we're going to be using today. Yeah, it's quite cool how many sort of adjustments there are on a, on essentially a spray gun. <laughs> yeah, well, it goes even more depth when you start using SATAs. SATAs are very similar. So that is your fan. So that does yeah. the actual fan. So you wind that in, that does spot. You wind it out, that does full fan. The adjustment on the top is your needle. Yeah. And then this back one is your pressure. So it, not like the real this is down here. Yeah. On the SATAs, they're at the top. And what would you use this gun for? That one's a lot smaller, <coughs> I know. Yeah, so this is a, a mini jet. This is a SATA mini jet. So this would be like for bumper scuffs, small objects that you're painting. Because obviously you don't want to put a load of paint on. So you, you'd use this. You don't need to get out big guns to yeah. do a little job. You cool. can do a little job with small gun. Oh, but cool. it's the same needle size. So this one's a 1.3. Um, so this is my base coat gun. I've got the exact same gun. That's a 1.2 for clear coat. But yeah, these are just for little little things like a crash helmet, anything small that you're painting. This would be ideal. I suppose we use a paint strainer, but we haven't got one. It's only an old banger for the escort. So this is the air that I was saying. You've got to have two bar. So if I pull the trigger back halfway, I'll turn it up. That's the pressure you need to mm. do this. Mm. So then, you've got that bit there you can do a test on. That's plenty. That's the size of the fan. Yeah. If I was to wind the fan in. All oh, right, yeah. Yeah, so that's yeah. a spot. So we've got our pressure all the way out. But you, want, fan. you want it to be fan, like for I want, Yeah, for this, you'll want to fan it. It's very rare you use a spot, only if you get like awkward spaces where you can't get the gun in. I'd put it on spot, but most 90% of the time it's on fan. Rob set to work laying the first coat of two pack primer to the driver's side door shuts. This job is going to have three coats of the two pack primer in total, so this first coat just needs to be very light but even. As quick as that. Yeah, it's quick like, compared to doing it with a spray pan, man. I could see that Rob was in his element after years and years of experience painting cars and with the engine bay done, it was my turn to have a go. Rob wound the needle in on the gun to limit the amount of paint that could come out just so that I could get used to it without completely ruining the job. Rob then reduced the air pressure to 1.5 bar. Pull half a trigger please. Okay, so we dropped it down. And after another little practice on the sheet and a brief description about how I should be approaching the job, he let me loose on the actual car. Rob was advising and guiding me as I went and he explained that as a beginner, it was better for me to attack the job in sections and I felt like I was doing quite well. But I've got this habit of going straight back over anything that looks see-through. Oh, mate. One, one coat. I feel like I've missed this bit. Nope, it's no. still on there, look. All right. So go up here, up and over the door now. So that was the first coat of two-pack primer done. But what did Rob think about my efforts? There's no right, there's no wrong. You've still got primer on it. But you can obviously see where you've gone a little bit light. Yeah, there's a patch there. Up here, a little bit here. But that was... It's just a grip coat. It's just so your next coat can have a good grip onto it. So it's still good enough. You know, it's not, it's not the end of the product. Mm. You know, we're still putting more on. So we've got plenty of time to build it up 
So your next coat, you want to do like you did here. Yeah. Sort of finish. Got you. But try and keep the gun fist away from the, the panel and then follow your line that you're going to go stop, reposition yourself, come back down, again, go along until you've got it covered and then don't go over it again because that's when you start getting runs. Yeah, yeah, I was overlapping People start quite rushing. A lot. Yeah. You know, remember, give it time, let it go off, go back to it. Cool. Well, no runs. That's, that's got to be a bonus, isn't it? <laughs> well, your next coat, we're going we're gonna to put you up to professional level <laughs> with this spray gun. So we'll see how you, you deal with that. Yeah. Because the settings that you just did on the gun, obviously that would prevent getting runs. and. Yeah, so that. I've dialed it right down. Yeah, yeah. So your next one, you're going to be up where I was on that side. All right, cool. So, so I have to watch you'll out You'll be able to feel the difference between <laughs> the two. Yeah. As you would have just seen, Rob's got a coat on the engine bay. And you were saying to me a minute ago off camera, there's a couple of areas which would be ideal for turning the, the fan to spot, right? Yeah, so we've got some parts on the bottom of the frame rails where obviously if you've got it on fan, you're not going to get it because you're too far away. Yeah. So if I put it on spot, you'll be able to see, you can get it on spot. All the tight areas that you can't get into, going down where the radiator goes, get it all down in there with a spot. Yeah. But I've covered, the, you know, 95% of the engine bay with a fan. Yeah. It's funny actually, when I was doing the spray can job on the inside of Heidi's doors, I didn't realise until like after I'd done the job that it, that had like a, an adjustment for the fan on the spray can and like, you know, areas like around the hinges and stuff, um, that would have been better for me to use, you know, the, the sort of smaller fan setting. But um, yeah, it wasn't the end of the world with that job. I put it on spot. For that two bar pressure. Yeah, I haven't got to lean yeah. in, but I can still get it covered. That part there never got touched because you had the battery train away. But now we can come in with the spot. All right, Rob, so you're about ready to hit your side with yep. the second coat. Yeah, so I've re-undone the fan. So I've got full fan again. And I've got two bar pressure. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, so you're going to be going a bit heavier. Yeah, so this side. one's going to be more of a heavy coat. So this one will be quite wet. But then the last one would be more wetter than this one. Rob laid a nice wet coat on the driver's side door shuts and the engine bay. And then it was my turn to jump back on the gun. Right, so am I up to like uh, higher pressure now? Yeah, so you're basically, I wound it all the way out to how I have it. I'll put you at two bar pressure. So now you're painting how I have it. All right, yeah. Remember, fist the way, so you've got to come in a bit, that's it. Right there. With every pull of the trigger, I was getting more and more confident with the spray gun. And as the nerves disappeared, I was actually starting to enjoy it. Well done. And I actually ended up doing the third coat on both door shuts myself, whilst Rob went to have his dinner. I pushed my luck a little bit by getting a really wet coat on there, but luckily I didn't get any runs at all. Done well, mate. Well, no, I think... 10 I out think, 10. No, thank you, man. All right, Rob's back from dinner. What'd you have, fish and chips? Fish and chips. Nice, was it? Lovely. <laughs> Yeah, so I didn't want to um, give the, the bay um, another coat. I wanted to leave that to you, but it's on there thick enough, you're saying, anyway. That is really thick, so that should be more than enough for what we want. Yeah, no, that's cool. I'm loving how this is looking, man. It's so cool seeing it all in prime. Mate. We've come a long way, man, from the, the nightmare paint. of having a bare metal, like all the door shuts and whatnot. One thing worth mentioning, I mean, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, but... Uh, yeah, we're, we're not going to be trusting any of the primer that's on the outside of the body show either. Definitely not. So I'm going to have to start attacking it all with the DA. <laughs> that all has to come off. Yeah. Other than the scuttle. Yeah, the scuttle was all right. Yeah, and that's why Rob's sort of done the scuttle now rather than waiting until we uh, do the outside of the car. But um, this is looking awesome. 
Can't wait, obviously, for the next stage, get it rubbed down, get it in beige. And yeah, it was awesome to have a go with a spray gun. <laughs> All right, Rob, well, it's time for me to get out your way and then I can go and have my dinner. Yeah. But um, massive thanks for talking us through the process today. Really interesting. No, nah, no problem. And thanks for letting me have a go. No. And, you know, I know I've said it a million times, but massive thanks for the extra effort you're putting into this thing. No, nah, that's fine. I know man. it's turned into a, a bit more of a, a big job, but... Um, yeah, but look at the result we're getting. Yeah. That's just a um, prime stage. Yeah. You know, we haven't even tiggled that yet. And look at a nice finish. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can literally see, like already you know it's nice and smooth nice and flat you know by the time this is prepped and painted it's going to look awesome and i can't wait for that stage uh, it won't be long yeah next couple days should yeah. be ready to go again cool if you uh if you're up for it we'll put some top coat on yeah, yeah. you can yeah. have a go on that yeah yeah why not well he's set the challenge now so it looks like i'll be attempting to put some beige paint on this thing very soon and you'll be able to see that in another video but yeah for now i'm going to get out of your way man i'll chat you soon thank you see you soon <laughs> Well, what did you think about that then? It was awesome having a go at doing some proper painting for once with a spray gun and a compressor. I want to send a massive thanks out to Rob for taking the time out to show me the ropes and massive, massive thanks for all the effort that you're putting in to Heidi's paint job. I know it's uh, turned into a bigger job than we were hoping, but I really, really appreciate everything you're doing. Now, I'm going to leave Rob's contact details in the description for anyone out there that's anywhere near out of West London who wants some paintwork doing but don't forget it's not just your regular paintwork that Rob can take care of he's into doing sort of custom paint jobs you know your candy apples and stuff like that he also does mad stuff with motorbike helmets and stuff like that you know airbrushing and you know really clever stuff so get in touch with Rob and mention my name if you need anything done like that and I've actually been trying to persuade Rob to start his own YouTube channel. He's hinted a few times that he'd be interested in starting to make videos. So if you can all do me a massive favor and give him some encouragement in the comments, you know, let us know. Do you want to see Rob making some videos showing what he gets up to with all his paint stuff? He's actually got a really cool ZTEC Turbo 100E build, which I featured ages ago on the channel. And I will be looking to give you guys an update on that car at some point. But um, yeah, he's a busy man, so uh, he doesn't get as much time on his own projects as he would like. Really looking forward to accepting Rob's challenge of putting the beige paint onto Heidi's door shuts. I think I'll let him do the engine bay though, to be honest. So that video will be coming up very soon. But if you thought this video was any good, please do give it a thumbs up and a share. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Click subscribe if you're new. Feel free to follow me on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. Check out my website for merchandise and car parts. Massive thanks as always to my patrons for your ongoing support. I'll leave all the links to everything in the description along with my email address for anyone who wants to contact me. But other than that, until next time, thanks for watching.